We often get asked through our Hagen customer service, what is the significance of a bird's leg band? And the question is quite an extensive one to answer, and there's uh, differences as well. Uh, whether this bird has a closed leg band, uh, such as this Amazon fledgling, of course, that was captive bred at Hari, or if the bird has an open leg band. Usually open leg bands are placed onto the bird uh, when the bird has reached maturity. Um, and so they are usually placed there either for um, identification following and sexing that perhaps your avian veterinarian has performed with endoscopy and therefore the bird would be banded on the uh, right leg for male and on the left leg for female. Uh, because uh, traditionally this was always the case due to the fact that the female's organs are located on the left side, this almost always made visual sense for most breeders. Now, I mentioned before that there are closed leg bands and there are open leg bands. The importance of knowing, um, <clears throat> first of all, whether your parrot has a closed or open one makes a very big difference because this will definitely prove that the bird had a closed leg band placed on his leg when he was very young. Uh, usually after several weeks after birth, uh, the feet enlarge so fast in order to be able to allow the bird to have a big crop and continue his maximum growth that you can no longer place a leg band on his foot that would securely fit. And so this is of great value if he has a closed leg band before you decide to spontaneously remove it out of fear that it might cause trauma onto the bird one day. Uh, there has to be a few other considerations that you should be making with your avian veterinarian. There are other leg bands that used to be placed onto birds' feet during quarantine uh, that are actually closed uh, with a screw. And these are technically open bands and they usually reflect an identification on it that would be uh, in relevance to the date and uh, the time and place that these birds were quarantined in. Now a lot of people uh, may confuse these with closed leg bands but they are dramatically different. And so uh, please take a photo of your bird's leg band if you want to inquire about the origin of the bird should you not have that information readily available to you. And we'll now discuss what kind of information you can actually gain from what is inscribed on these leg bands. Responsible breeders usually choose a leg band of uh, either a plain color or a color that they're associated with, as well as abbreviations, and usually the country of origin. And every year we have leg bands usually that are made uh, to be able to identify the chicks that will be born in our care, whether they're parent raised or whether they're uh, raised in our nursery, in order to keep an amazing tracking of these birds for the rest of their life. The information found on uh, leg bands can vary from different countries and different breeders as we normally uh, order these specifically to represent our own agricultural uh, colony. And so, for example, on our Harry bands, we would have the words Harry reflecting our agricultural flock. And then on the other direction of the band, we would have the date. And then, of course, we would have a number attributed to, to this particular individual during that particular date. And finally, we would have the country Canada, as we feel this is very important for future traveling uh, of caretakers with their birds, that they have the country of origin in which this bird was born. What's really unfortunate, regrettably, is that sometimes uh, the small window of opportunity that is allowed for us to be able to put the closed leg band onto a young bird before his feet get too big uh, is very small. And sometimes that period is missed. And so maybe someone would be forced to put a, a band that's a little bit too big in order to still um, have the confirmation that this bird was captive bred. Uh, these bands can definitely cause a lot of trauma onto the birds. These are the ones that usually uh, have complications because birds get um, they start to play with branches or toys and they can get them wrapped into a toy. And, and so definitely there is a concern for the safety of uh, leg bands, especially closed leg bands. But I would say that ideally as a responsible breeder in such doubt when we feel that perhaps uh, a bird is a smaller individual than normal, uh, whether they're all double yellow heads, it doesn't mean that they all have the same size 14 or 16 put onto their feet. What we normally do is try and put at least two leg bands on either side of the bird's feet and we would put two sizes close to each other. And then when the bird has reached a few months of age, we can evaluate which one is properly fitted. And this band is usually the one that will stay. And this is how we found a better way now to be able to 
um, <clears throat> raise our birds with an identity to be able to conserve this identity ideally throughout his life. So the question is, how should we evaluate whether or not the size of the band is too big? Well, normally if the band goes higher up than the hawk, then it's definitely dangerous and it should be removed. And if the band is uh, too small to actually fit in properly when we're inserting it, then it's definitely too small. Now, definitely as aquaculturists, we try not to be too invasive when we're putting on a band, and there's a very specific technique that we use in order to ensure that it fits perfectly but is not too tight when it's actually going in because it could definitely harm the bird's foot. Another consideration for health that uh, often will require us to remove the band is that certain birds, especially birds that are overweight um, or aging birds, may be resting more and more on their hawks. Uh, this can also be attributed to the fact that they're maybe offered a purchase that are way too large for them. But in this incidence, uh, often what will result is uh, pododermatite or injury under the band. And this can be something more difficult for you to look at and make sure it's not happening uh, regularly. And we cannot only rely on the annual veterinarian checkup for this. So we encourage you uh, to frequently inspect the skin underneath and around the bird's leg band to ensure that it doesn't cause any kind of injury to your bird. Now, if you're considering having these bands removed, there's a very specialized technique and it usually requires more than one handler in order to be able to remove these very, very sturdy bands. And it's definitely not something that we would recommend you take lightly or that you attempt to do yourself. Uh, it's actually quite impressive to see the uh, tools that are needed to remove uh, these bands. And of course, they were designed to withstand a uh, parrot's beak. And so, uh, obviously, they're very, very uh, secure and, and hard to break apart. Um, some, for some of the smaller obsidians, of course, uh, the aluminum bands are not as difficult to cut. But uh, trying to attempt to cut these bands usually result in injuries, fractures, and possibly also injury to the uh, metatarsal vein. So these should be done definitely with a very skilled handler. And uh, like I said, usually uh, when we decide to remove these bands, what's fundamentally important now to stress is that the importance of this identity can never be replaced unless it is done so immediately at the same time by the appointed veterinarian that's removing the band. And so the identification uh, other than this band would be a microchip implant. Usually these are implanted in the bird's breast muscle. And uh, this is important to mention that we don't usually recommend that these be placed onto a bird until the birds have successfully developed a healthy breast muscle and have the opportunity to fly and are at a, uh, the end at least of their uh, educational stages and weaning stages uh, to ensure that these birds are not being uh, harmed or traumatized. And, and so this is a practice that is done frequently and it is easily implanted by a skilled veterinarian. But again, it should definitely be uh, done immediately when these bands are removed. The fact remains, uh, nonetheless, even if you are to replace your leg band with a microchip, that many companies have gone, uh, came and gone over the years in the industry, and not all of the different uh, avian veterinarians have the scanners to identify these different companies that manufacture these chips. And regrettably, uh, some of these birds, uh, especially the birds that are CITES and have uh, the right to travel from country to country, uh, may be lost in tracking because of the different uh, technical uh, scanners that exist and, of course, implants. And so, without a doubt, uh, leg band remains the most visual, the most efficient way to identify a bird. And in many of uh, our aviaries, uh, most of the birds that were born in our care have closed leg bands. And some of them also have uh, different uh, manufactured um, implants as well, but uh, it's more visual for us when there's an emergency that arises or for identification to associate with a particular behavior that we see and are able to read and confirm the identity of a specific individual immediately. Choosing to identify our birds with a closed leg band as an aviculturist is really important for several reasons. Uh, of course, because we do nutritional studies and longevity on a lot of our birds, and we're also very preoccupied about the genetics of our birds and the quality and behavior uh, that they will have as companion parrots. And also, it, it's become more and more important for us to 
uh, be able to assess the benefits of the early parrot education that our birds have learned as young fledglings. And for all these reasons, um, it's important for us to have people that adopt our birds out know that they are hairy birds. Of course, if uh, regrettably these birds suffer from any health issues uh, in the future, we also want the uh, veterinarian to be able to contact us so that we're able to assess the health of the parents as well. Uh, so for many, many reasons, uh, as responsible aviculturists, it is fundamentally important for us to have good records of all of the parents and all the fledglings that we keep. Of course, without this, it would be impossible for us to ensure future captive breeding management program and ensure that the genetics have been done well and that we don't have any birds that are breeding with their cousins or sisters in the future. And so it is definitely, without a doubt for us, the most valuable tool that we have. That being said, we encourage you as caretakers to be responsible and to uh, evaluate with your avian veterinarian whether or not you should be removing the band or keeping it. And if you do decide to remove it, and that's fine, just make sure that you do have the written uh, certification that your veterinarian removed it and perhaps uh, keep definitely the band as this is a, a, a very important, especially if regrettably one day your bird gets rehomed. And this kind of information and valuable piece of identification should definitely travel along with your bird. Another question that is often asked um, through the customer service is whether or not people can tag or have access to a registry in order to be able to identify the particular breeder that bred the bird that they are caring for. And this is very dependent on the breeder and also the different countries. Uh, in Canada, we do have some kind of service through the avicultural uh, network and sometimes this information uh, can be sent out to the breeder and then they decide whether or not they want to contact you. So no, there isn't a clear uh, absolute registry for leg bands. Anybody can have those made for themselves and they can choose or not to freely advertise uh, the fact that they belong to this particular identification.